All right, this is gonna be the second video for the 20R that we're gonna rebuild for Shihiro, the 1979 Toyota pickup. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video is going to be us tearing the long block down because I think it needs a rebuild. It's not horrible, but it does have some uh, minor scoring in the cylinder walls. Um, specifically cylinder wall number two, I can kind of feel some vertical scoring and you can kind of see it. There is some cross hatching still, but uh, I think it would be a good idea just to get this thing bored out. And restarted, you know, put some new, put some new uh, rings in there, possibly some bearings. We're gonna find that out today. Timing chain and set looks brand new, so I'm gonna keep that. It is a metal-backed guide set, so that's really cool too. Um, I was kind of like debating whether or not I wanted to just like send it with a new gasket, head gasket, and just see how long it can last, or if I wanted to pull the motor and do a full rebuild. Uh, as it turns out, I'm really glad that I did. Unfortunately, it's not on video, but just believe me. When I took this engine out last night, it was nighttime, first of all. It got dark out on me, so that was also probably wasn't going to film too well anyway. Um, but I found out a couple very interesting things. One, the flywheel bolts were half unscrewed. Like, I'm talking not loose. Like, they were coming out. Like, loose. One of them was too tight. Was actually still all the way in there. And was too tight to... Uh, take out by hand but the uh, I think two two out of the six were were in there like still flush but they they were easily removed with my fingers and then the other three were literally half backed out so it's a really good thing that we're doing this after all I'm pretty excited about the head honestly because it has I think the Toyota marking on it I don't know if it's like an actual Toyota head or not but it's brand new Can you see it in there, right down there? That TEQ or whatever it is. You guys will tell me in the comments if you guys know. It says 16 right here on the um, exhaust side. And then I think it says 8-16 inside the number one cylinder's uh, cam lobes. I think it's the probably the stock cam. It's probably a brand new head. And I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah, tell me what you guys think. It's got NGKR spark plugs, and it looks like it has pretty pretty much new valves in there as well. It looks like it has a little bit of run time on it, but uh, they look pretty good. They look really good, actually. And uh, looks nice and clean everywhere. Underneath looks really good, too. Looks pretty fantastic. There's no cracking in between the valves. The valves also have the TEQ symbol on them. They're all the same. They look fresh, man. Pretty excited. Everything looks really good on this head. So I'm going to clean that up, scrape it, and uh, put a flat edge against it. And we're just going to look and see if I need to get this uh, thing flattened or not. Here's Shihiro's engine bay with no engine in it. Very sad. But also very cool because that means this is getting done. Um, I'm going to keep the stock exhaust on it for now. I'm not going to put that heat shroud stuff around it anymore because those bolts um, those bolts weren't on those studs all the way. And I think partially it's because of that new head has shorter studs for whatever reason. This is just my guess, guys. I don't know, but um, it had shorter studs. And because that shrouding was in there, it needed two different gaskets, So meaning that it needed to take up more of that thread space. Um, plus the shrouding piece itself took up a tiny bit amount as well. So um, I've never had any issues running just the stock manifold um, Just open so I'm gonna Well not open, but you, you guys know what I mean. No shrouding no heat shrouding around it So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it just like that and hopefully be able to actually uh, Tighten this thing down worst case scenario. It's pretty easy to get this exhaust out of the way once the engines in and and uh, Put longer studs in there if I have to not a huge deal um, probably gonna just keep running the same uh, EGR air pipe coming down here, but I'm gonna snip it um, just right off the head right here, and then crimp it down in my vise just to be ghetto about it, and not have to build some block off plates here and and uh, grind down these little these little nipples right here. Um, that that tends to be the easiest way to do things. I did order an EGR block off plate kit for it, so you're not gonna be running the EGR, um, and I am gonna be putting that Weber 
Well, you know, I haven't decided if I'm going to do the Weber or if I'm going to do the same thing I did to the Turd, which is just rock this carburetor with uh, significantly less vacuum lines, just the bare minimum stuff, like the secondaries and uh, the distributor, and uh, I think that might be it. And basically just block everything else off, either with little vacuum caps, which I bought off, off of Amazon. You guys can get like a multi-pack off of Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, for little projects like this, or if, if I want to go all out, I could just go to the hardware store and get plugs, which I've I've done both. It works, whatever, whatever you want to do. If you want to clean it up, go get plugs. I might not care that much this time. What else? The clutch. The clutch looks brand new. The throwout bearing looks brand new. The pilot bearing looks brand new, and they feel brand new. They still got the little bit of grease on them. Um, this one is in fair shape. I mean, I'd say it's new. I'd say it's damn near close to being brand new on both sides. All evenly worn or whatever, or, or lack thereof. Still got the grooves. It looks like every other brand new clutch I've ever put in. Um, and it's funny because I, I preemptively purchased an Exidy clutch set. So I may, I may just run this or I may just run that. Either way, I have an extra clutch. So it says T-NKK, which I looked it up and... Uh, some people are saying that, that might be like a pro comp clutch. Other people are saying it might be like from uh, AutoZone or something like that. But uh, I'm not sure. There's no other markings on it. There is some sort of uh, thing written here in yellow, but it's so blurry. There's no way you can tell. That might be an A in the middle, but there's just no way to tell. So that's cool. Um, what else? Flywheel. <sighs> Flywheel looks to be... I mean, I'm looking at it in the light here. I'm not super impressed, honestly. It looks to be like needing to be surfaced or something. There's a crack right there. This might be the original flywheel. I may end up not using this flywheel, actually. But there's like some sort of weird, like, like outward motion. I don't know if you can, if you guys can see that. There's like this outward kind of scraping. Not quite sure what to explain, how or how to, how to explain this, but um, maybe wire wheel or something. I don't know. I'm probably not going to use that. I don't really want to risk it. Now that I'm looking at it in the light, kind of looks like crap. All right, alternators off. This is just for my reference, guys. That's how that goes. A little bracket for it. All right, let's see what we got. Dang, dude, this thing was rebuilt recently, somewhat recently, maybe. I don't know, though, lots of flakes in that sledge. It's a pretty good amount of sledge down in here. Lots of little micro flakes, maybe just break-in flakes, I'm not sure. But, uh, <clears throat> flakes nonetheless. I'm not going to be reusing this gasket. I don't trust it. What do we notice? Let's see. Um, oil pickup screen is relatively clean. We'll go ahead and take uh, take the pickup off so that we can inspect these mains and the rods. So far so good other than those bolts on the flywheel and a number of other things that I've already mentioned, like the oil filter O-ring. By the way, that oil filter, uh, that was the proper O-ring for it. It had it actually just kind of popped back into place and looks like a relatively newish filter. Although, after seeing these flakes, I'm not gonna be running that filter. Um, and it didn't seem that bad. I was able to just pop it right back in. Looks like someone just like didn't pay attention and screwed it right in without it being you know, all the way in the little lip in the oil filter. Um, and then we'll just lay them out here. I guess we're gonna go from, uh, I guess for the record, we'll just kind of spin this like this. We'll just do it like this. So the front will be here, front towards the rear. So one, two, three, four, okay? Left to right. Ah, oh, man, all right. That's on there. I might want my breaker for this. Oh, nah, right in front of my face. Sweet. A little bit of a ball peen action here. We're going to go ahead and just uh, 
give little baby taps to these threads. There we go, just enough to break that cap loose. Hopefully. It kind of seems like this motor was rebuilt like really recently. Maybe not really recently, but like uh, within a small amount of hours of being run. Those pistons look brand new, the whole thing looks brand new. It's gonna be a shame if those pistons are shot. I'm also kind of hoping that I can just uh, rehone the cylinders as opposed to rebore it. That would be cool. And it's kind of an exercise in um, my lack of understanding. I've only rebuilt a couple of motors and like really only one to like this full extent, like building it myself, using all new materials and getting the full machine work done. And that was there on Sticky. You guys can see that video in my uh, channel if you go back and take a look. Me and some friends build the engine and it's running to this day. Months later, I, I work it every day. It's one of my uh, it's one of my main work trucks. I haul a small little trailer with a rider behind it and fully loaded, full of gear, and <clears throat> me and my wife, and uh, it does fine. So this is going to be kind of an experiment to see, well, first of all, what the machine shop says, but to see if I can just uh, get this thing rehoned. Those, those cylinder walls, they don't seem horrible, but they do need a little bit of help. Wow, that crank is nice and shiny. And uh, maybe so are these bearings, although that's kind of weird. There's a little bit of wear in these bearings, for sure. Yeah, there is a little bit of wear. And uh, it's not bad, but you can see kind of some of the lines there. It's not worn through to the copper material or nothing, but uh, there's definitely a little bit of wobble in that crank. And you can also see these tiny little dots, okay? That's not debris, but that's, you can even feel them a little bit. That's something on the bearing. I don't know what it is acid etch or something maybe somebody didn't didn't put this together and run oil through it fast enough or something like that you can kind of see what i'm talking about so that's interesting i'm definitely gonna put new bearings in this let's move on shall we well they're on they're nice and tight crankshaft looks kind of all right I can see some slight imperfections on it, but they're very slight. I guess I can almost feel them, but I, I'm not going to say I can feel those. It might need to be turned. I don't know. I'll let the I'll let the shop decide. And I'm just hitting the tips of these without hitting the threads at all, guys. Obviously. Number two, kind of looks like. Yep, I'm starting to feel it on the crank now. Yep, I can feel that on the crank. So, same kind of movement there. You can see the similar damage. That's actually a little bit worse than the other one. So, it's starting to tell a story. Voice is tough. Ugh. Okay. And while I'm sitting right here, I might as well bust these loose too, huh? All right, number three, similar damage. Not as bad as number two. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention, guys, is, uh, and you'll see this in a minute, but uh, the number two cylinder, I wanna say, possibly the, possibly the number three, but I think it was the number two, um, didn't have almost any carbon buildup on it, so it was like getting washed out by like coolant, presumably. See, a little bit more, a little bit of damage there too, a little bit of linear damage there on the bearing. Trying my best not to drop these. in the block or in the dirt. Oh, number four looks really good. Like really new, like barely any damage, I guess. Kind of a couple of tiny little lines, but by far the best one. Um, that number two though, you can feel that on the crank, so that will have to be turned. Number four seems good. So in order of best to worst, number four is the best. Number three is the second best. No, number, yeah, number three is the second best. Number one is the third best. Number two is pretty gross. Same thing. These are actually numbered, so let's make sure they're actually numbered properly. One, two, in the middle is always three. 
four and five. And you wanna make sure that those say that because uh, on one of these 22Rs I, I took apart recently, um, it, it had like two number threes or something like that. I forget what it was, but it was some inconsistency and um, somebody had, had gotten to it and basically made it unbalanced by doing that. And the machine shop made me send him another set. Luckily I had, didn't have to buy those. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Oh, so much easier, my God. We're gonna take them all off for sure, so I'm just gonna break them all loose. Hmm. That's smart, so I scraped the shit out of my finger now. I don't know, I mean, is it bad? I, I, I don't know. Are those lines bad or is that just like break-in lines, you know what I mean? Crank seems fine. Number two seems like there's a little wear too, but nothing nothing to write home about maybe. I'm not sure, see? But we're learning, we're learning. I'm not sure if that's tolerable wear or intolerable wear. Ah, this one's going to be a pain in the ass because it's got the thrust washers on it. We'll skip the middle one for now. Seems a little better, more even maybe. But then see there's like this assembly lube on it which just tells me that this thing was just freaking brand new, fresh, super fresh. <sighs> I'm starting to regret doing this a little bit. It all just seems just like fresh. But then parts of it don't, so I don't know. That's a pain in the ass. Maybe that'll come out with the crank, huh? Maybe we don't have to worry about that. Um, one thing I do have to worry about though is this crankshaft pulley. That did not have a bolt in it. <laughs> what the fuck? What are we gonna do about that? I guess use my uh, steering wheel puller and we'll yank her on out. This would be considerably more difficult if I didn't already have one of these crank bolts just lying around in my Toyota box. So I screwed this in basically all the way and then I'm gonna back it out just a little bit. It's got plenty of threads in there for this, probably about eighth of an inch or so, just so I can start working it out. I mean, hopefully you guys know how to use pullers. Oh, hey, here you go. The crank is uh, zero to zero, so uh, 20 thousandths out. Um, it says 20-20, it's good information, I guess. It means the shop actually probably did did the machine work. If this was a much bigger pulley, this puller wouldn't work, you know what I mean? I had some a hard time getting this same pulley off of a Subaru engine that I worked on recently. And I'm not looking forward to fighting that fight again anytime soon. So we're just gonna do it this way and uh, you know, be safe, slow, and steady. Where's my 14? Okay, once it's on there, then you just button this up into the center, the center bolt by hand until it's nice and taut. It goes up against that bolt, and then you just take a tool. Oh, look at that, it's not even uh, It's not even 14. God, what is it, 17? What the hell? Sure, 17 will work. I think it's a 16, but who's counting? It's coming right out. Excellent. And then uh, once it comes back to the back of that bolt right there, we'll go ahead and spin this out so I got some room to take that bolt out. And we'll take that bolt out a little bit more. Oh yeah, this thing's gonna come right out now. It should do it. God, maybe, huh? Yeah, you can see it popping out right there. And that's all I got for the bolt, it popped out. So I don't have the luxury of the bolt anymore. So we can either take like a little flat piece of uh, steel or something to put it right here to go against this bolt on my tool, or if we really are lucky, then uh, we can yank this thing off by hand, or with a hammer. Let's go easy. The motor look good? 
yeah, better than uh, better than it should. All right, also guys, the rear main seal uh, looks like an OG Japanese one, which is cool. I'm gonna try to preserve that and see if it's preservable by taking this whole backing plate off, which needs to happen anyway to get this crankshaft out. But realistically, I actually ordered one last night. They're like 10 bucks. I ordered a, a brand new rear main seal on eBay. So it's coming. It would be a stupid decision to reuse this one and take that risk because once I take it out of here, might as well throw it away because that's one of those things where like if you get a rear main seal leak, you're going to have to do all this again. You're going to either have to take your transmission out or take your engine out to fix that. What the fuck? No, those bolts are dicked. Don't worry guys, I got extra bolts. The other thing, the other thing that was weird about this motor and this truck is that there's a whole bunch of like aftermarket bolts, like all the bell housing bolts are not stock except for two. And that's really weird. Um, including the bolts to the hood. The hood bolts are like no. not stock at all. They're nice. They're, they're all nice bolts. Like they went to the hardware store and got like grade eight, like nice bolts. Or maybe they special ordered them. I actually have some receipts from bolts. So I, I think that that explains that. But the motor has some weird bolts on it. The flywheel had uh, four out of six stock bolts. And then two of the bolts were like 13 mils. You always know if you see a 13 mil, you're like, oh, that's a hardware bolt. I don't think there's a single 13 millimeter on these, on these trucks. I'm probably wrong about that. I'm thinking, I'm not pretty sure though. It's usually uh, 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s, 17s, 19s, 21s. We're going to bop this out gently. It's going to be a pain in my ass, isn't it? Maybe if I like go into here and pry. There we go. Alright, um, we're going to take the oil pump off now. Oil pump is coming off. 12 mils all the way around. Ugh. All the 12 mils. One of my least favorite things to do on a 22R, or in this case a 20R, is take the timing cover off. It's a freaking nightmare. Oil pump. Looks like a brand new pump, nice and sharp, not worn at all. I will be reusing that pump. Might as well take that O-ring out now while we're thinking about it, right? Uh, yikes. This O-ring seems a little bit dicked. Let's go ahead and take that water pump off too, just to make sure. Because just like any of this crap, that'll fry the motor too if that's bad. Plus we're just curious, right? At this point, we're in for a full rebuild. Yeah, maybe don't spin the 10 mils out that fast, Chris. Jesus. Go easy on these puppies. That's an aftermarket bolt. Oh, what the? Oh my god, dude. It's not an aftermarket bolt necessarily, but it's been shaved down unevenly. Actually, looks like maybe a stock bolt. That's bizarre. Okay. Let's play... Whack-a-mole. Well, it's been pretty well glued on there, but I still want to know. Where can we pry against? Nowhere. I mean, I can't even really complain that it's glued on there with a uh, Toyota flavored RTV. I guess that could just be high heat RTV, which would be the wrong application, but I saw it on the on the header too, so it's one of the two. It's either Toyota flavored or it's high heat flavored. There we go. Okay. There we go. Got it. NSK, and on this water pump, it says Willamette Electric, and it says Asco on it. Is that a good brand, Asco? I think they make some pistons, right? It's a cast metal wheel. 
So uh, yeah, we'll probably reuse that. We're gonna need to get this guy out. Okay. That's also gonna be a pain in the ass. Hmm. All right, that Woodruff key that we didn't lose, that's cool. Try not to scratch any surfaces here. At this point, we're pretty deep, boys and girls. Ah, Jesus. Jesus, Lord. I don't want to scratch anything. What if we held pressure on it and bopped them? No, that's not going to do shit, huh? There we go. Got it. All right. Don't want to lose that woodruff key. It's pretty important. Don't want to lose any of it. It's all relatively important. Actually, we're going to need that pry tool once again. We're going to start prying this timing cover off. And surprisingly, it's going to come right off. There we are. There it is. Let's check on the inside of it and see if it was wearing through to the water jacket yet. Nope. It was fine. Looks like they reused that too. A lot of the times this little tang will break off for whatever reason. Some of this will break off. And a lot of the time that timing chain will be eaten through here into the water jacket right here. So this is another thing I was concerned about that I was like, you know what, after seeing all those loose bolts, I was like, you know what, let's say these, uh, you know, the tensioner comes loose or something because the guy didn't torque these bolts down here down. Um, you know, at this point I just don't want to risk it. So, so here we are. We're doing the full rebuild and taking this out. We're gonna keep this nice and clean. We're gonna do our best to at least. We'll put it right here in the oil. Brand new. So here's where my brain's going right now, okay? I'm thinking maybe if this thing was just rebuilt, maybe I get the I get a new set of, of bearings, throw the bearings in it, clean it all up, and try to rehone this fucker myself. I've never done it before, but um, I think I can make it look better than the home that it has on it right now. It's always good to stretch your abilities, you know? And it would save me some dough and some time. I'm pretty freaking sure. Pretty sure this motor would have ran just fine if I wouldn't have done any of this stupid shit, but here we are. So terrifying. Okay. Trying to be as gentle as possible here. All right. Like it kind of seems fine, like on the on the skirts, there's like a little bit of wear, but I think they're new pistons. So I think I'm gonna run them, if, it, if they're all like this, that is. Can't feel any play in the, in the wrist pin either at all. Uh, side to side, that's normal, but up and down or angled in any weird way. So that's one. Yeah, this number two piston is kind of pissed off. See, that's got a lot more scarring on it. I still think they're usable. Mm-hmm, you can see that oil in the sunlight now. It's got lots of flakes in it. You see that? I'll probably freaking send it in, guys. I don't want to do this all over again, you know? It's got a little groove groove movement as well, but it's not horrible. Maybe they're the wrong size pistons. I think I probably will send it in. I, I don't want to have to do this twice. I'd be real disappointed if I had to do this again for the same engine. I kind of like, I get excited about stuff, and then if I have to do it twice, though, for the same project, I'm like, ugh, yuck, I don't want to do that. Sure, I'll build two motors that are basically identical, but if they're for two different trucks, I'm way more excited about it than if I have to do it twice for the same truck. That's just shitty. So this number four piston, that's right. So this is the one that's different. It's got a smaller little notch right here. So it leads me to believe that this is a different brand of piston and it looks like, yeah, it is. Check this out. It even looks different. See? See how those two notches are different? Weird. All right, let's see these cylinder walls. 
Number one looks pretty good. Number two is shit. Number three is kind of shit, but better. Number four is has a little shit in it. It's not as good as one though. One's the best. Harbor Freight, never used. And it still broke the packaging on its own just from sitting around. I'm also gonna need a drill, huh? How? It's a portal gun. A portal gun? Oh, it's like a... Like, no! <laughs> what does it do? It's a honing stone thing. So, see this cross hatching? Oh. See how it has like spirally scratches in it? Mm -hmm. Like really fine? Mm -hmm. See this one? How it has up and down scratches? Mm -hmm. That's not ideal. Oh God, I've never done this before. But I already have to send this in anyway if I fuck this up. So, I bought this literally years ago from Harbor Freight. This is like a self honing, like cheap man's fucking thing. So I'm just pre-soaking the stones with oil so we don't scratch the shit out of it, even though that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. well, you, you know what? I have a better idea. Scratch. Huh? So yeah, you don't want to like dry scratch it, you know? I don't. This works better. We're going to do the worst one first because that one definitely has to be done. We'll just dump the oil right in the water passage. That's where it goes. Make it nice and moist. All right. The cylinder number two, it's lubricated. These um, honing stones are lubricated with uh, apparently some little bullshit on it that I need to get rid of. I'm glad I checked. Check all of them real quick. They're uh, pre-lubricated here. So that's groovy. And they're very fine stones. We're gonna go ahead and jam them in there. And we're gonna do this for the very first time together, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. Are we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> well, come look. Did it fuck it up? Yeah. Yeah, it did? I don't know. Hmm. Doesn't seem great, but what do I know? It actually seems pretty cool. Try it again. So the way you do this, guys, is you basically jam this in here and spin it until it looks good. Dang, it's actually looking kind of good. Like better than it was. Probably supposed to use some sort of special cutting oil or something. I don't think I'm gonna send this thing to the machine shop. I think I'm gonna put it back together. Really? Yeah as an experiment, and also to keep costs down. Yeah. She likes it when I say that. <laughs> yeah, that one seems nice. This seems awesome. Wow. It's almost like I'm doing a good job. I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing a good job at all. I have no idea. I don't know, you can still see it. It feels it feels good, like it feels nice and scratchy and honed. But you can clearly see that it's still has lots of scratches up and down. <laughs> Well, it still looks like shit, guys, but I'm feeling that ridge a lot less. Maybe not a lot less, but noticeably less. Ooh, a package. All right, guys, I just took a break and kind of sat for a couple minutes and pondered and thought, you know, uh, what the best course of action here is. I keep going back and forth like I often do in my head. Do I want to do this myself and uh, and you know see if it'll see if it works, or do I want to just have it done right and just know it's going to be done and just spend the money once, spend the time once, just do it. The guy gave me the lady's number who who basically had this truck for the longest time, so I called the lady. Uh, her name's Colleen, and uh, she's super sweet. She was really excited to hear from me, and uh, she even said that I made her day by calling her. 
Um, I promised her that it was in good hands, Shihiro that is. Uh, yeah, it was, it was an awesome, awesome talk. And she said that her nephew in about 2007 um, rebuilt the engine and then the fuel pump went out and uh, she didn't have any money and so it kind of just sat. The guys I bought it from did some work for her at her property recently and, uh, and this part kind of catches, catches us up because I already knew this part. But then I bought it from them and they had only had it for, they said 48 hours, but who knows. I didn't ask her that specifically, but they didn't have it for long. And apparently she says they blew the motor up. Now, um, we know that I'm assuming, I'm assuming her nephew, I don't mean to call anybody out, but um, I, I assume that her nephew is the one that didn't torque down those uh, bolts in the back at this point. So I'm glad that I took that out because that could have caused a lot of damage. Um, it does look like he did a good job rebuilding it. I'm not sure who did the machining work, but... Uh, Something happened, and, and I and I I have a suspicion. My suspicion is this: it wasn't it wasn't the nephew. It wasn't the nephew's fault. My suspicion is that all the work was done well, okay? Possibly even the clutch, because maybe that was done afterwards. I don't know, but uh, all the internal motor work seems to have been done well. But my new theory is that um, when these guys that I bought it from got it, they fired it up and they didn't prime. She said they didn't prime it. They didn't do, they didn't even, I guess the motor's not even broken in. It's that new, which makes sense, right? Uh, but they didn't even prime the, the oil or nothing, and it had sat for so long that uh, I'm kind of thinking that that number two cylinder is, you know, basically it was ran dry. It was fired up dry. They didn't prime the system, and uh, they scored the cylinders for us. So uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, I think, uh, I think... You know, I'm most likely going to take this thing and bring it to the freaking machine shop and uh, have them do what they're going to do with it. I'm hoping, uh, you know, that they can just get away with like a bare minimum kind of a deal. I'm going to have them scrape the top with the, with the timing cover because it's a little bit off. I'm going to have them scrape the top just to be safe so we're not worried about that uh, gushing oil situation again. Although the, that probably had more to do with it being, being improperly torqued down than anything. And uh, just going to send it off. Anyway guys, so that's it. If you guys don't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, it really helps us out a lot. Um, I know I always say that, everybody on YouTube says that, but it's true. So uh, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. All right, see ya.